Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. It's, well, anything's possible. Happy possibilities, right? And we're here today to talk to Peggy Smith, who's our expert in happiness uh, as a nurse, as a hypnotherapist, and uh, so much uh, she brings to the table, getting to know her. And she's a real great caretaker with her animals. And she's a multitask as the phone rings. We all do it. How are you feeling to start? Um, well, today's my birthday, so I'm feeling a little bit older. Happy birthday. Oh, my goodness. Happy, happy and, birthday. That's uh, great. Yeah, you may want to take something off your hand. What? Way that you, uh, take a look at your arm. All my cotton stuff? Oh, I have not yet for my surgery yesterday. I have not. Well, no, but you can take them off now. You're not going to bleed to death. I didn't even I didn't even think about it. You're the first person to point it out. But thank you for reminding me. I need some alcohol. Thank you. Okay. No, you can't drink with that kind of anesthesia. Oh, no, no. I need alcohol, <laughs> rubbing alcohol, I meant, to get it off, silly. <laughs> okay. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how rituals can increase our uh, and help us create healthier habits and a healthier lifestyle. And I was thinking about it because even though we're several uh, months, hopefully, away from the, the traditional holidays, uh, just, you know, thinking about the Jewish holidays and their new year and how it's kind of a chance to, you know, reset your mind and plan the future. The holidays are pretty hectic for everybody. But if we can plan in advance as early as even the end of September, then we can help reduce the stress that we're going to have uh, in the December time. You know, even Thanksgiving to December, that's a pretty busy time. So uh, that's what we're talking about today. And it's, it starts with morning rituals, um, morning rituals, even though it seems like, oh God, I'm not a morning person. I can't get out of bed. If you can learn to create some morning rituals, you actually have a lot more energy in the morning and you look forward to getting out of bed um, and you're ready to go. And once you get through like, you know, the basic chores and stuff that you do in the morning, it's, you're ready to go and you're feeling good about it usually. Um, so a lot of people, you know, we all keep hitting that snooze button over and over and that wasn't working to get me up. So I had this app on my phone, loud alarm, which is obnoxious as heck. And sometimes I'm so half asleep and can't find the way to turn it off. So I just turn off the whole phone, <laughs> you know, I'm plugging. Uh, but, you know, we, we do need to be successful and, and get our days going usually. And there's actually scientific research like there is for everything. I mean, imagine people get paid to like figure out you know, how we can get out of bed and move faster. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the latest research shows us that if you have a productive morning routine, it can actually increase your career uh, success. Uh, it lowers your stress levels because you feel like you're prepared. You're not just like running from the bus stop and, you know, late and missed your breakfast and, you know, traffic, you know, freaks you out. It just helps you stay more stable and feeling more grounded and it promotes healthy habits. Um, you're actually enjoying, you know, washing your face and brushing your teeth. It's not like quick, you know, did I hit every tooth? I got to run. I'm going to be late. Kids have got to go to school, you know? Um, and it, it creates a sense of direction and focus and it really does increase your energy levels and you can accomplish a lot more than when you're just trying to hit in the day, you know, haphazard with no plan. Um, People that don't usually have morning habits, a good routine, uh, their thoughts are always frazzled. They usually don't sleep well, often feel overwhelmed that, you know, even the slightest, you know, too many red lights on the path, that type of thing. They tend to procrastinate more and they just waste a lot of time because they're always thinking about what they have to get done instead of just doing what they need to do. So uh, I'm just going to offer some suggestions of, you know, how you can actually uh, increase your happiness, lower your stress, and, you know, become more productive throughout your day. Um, the very first habit is, is very simple. Uh, most, you know, when we were younger, we probably resisted it. Not all parents were structured enough to suggest it. But if you make your bed first thing in the morning, it makes a big difference for the rest of the day. And when you're approaching that same bed at nighttime, it, it looks so nice to have a nicely, neatly made bed that, you know, just waiting, inviting you to come in and sleep and have a restful night's sleep. I know when I went away to college, both of my adopted parents were um, army people, 
um, both my mother and my father were in the army. And, you know, so I learned how to make a square corner and my bed always had to be made and my clothes had to be hung out the night before, things like that. When I went to college, I thought, oh, I'm not, not making my bed anymore. Well, I, I found out when I got, it was time to go to bed, I would actually take two minutes and make that bed, even though it was, you know, 11 o'clock at night and I was getting ready to jump in it because I couldn't just sleep in a bed that was all crumpled and hadn't been fresh and tidied up all the hell day. Um, you know, that was a ritual that was taught to me as a child and I was trying to rebel against it, but it actually had a good, good purpose. Um, people that make their own beds, according to research, they're usually happier. They get a lot more done. Uh, um, and there was a Navy Admiral in a commencement speech at the University of Texas. Um, his name was William McRaven. And he said, if you make your bed every morning, you'll have accomplished the first task of the day. It gives you a small sense of pride and it just helps you get off on the right track. And like I said, it seems like a simple thing that, you know, that you don't actually have time for because there's so many other things on your list, but it's important to make time. The second thing that uh, brain MD suggests is you have to get a good night's sleep. Uh, and yeah, that's electronics important. make that very challenging. Um, a good morning starts with the night before. The experts say you should have seven to eight hours of restful sleep and anything less usually has adverse effects on your mental and physical health. Um, the Harvard School of Medicine has recommended more than 20 years, I think, that all electronics, including TVs in your bedroom, they recommend not having a TV in your bedroom, uh, same for the children, as, um, because the, your brain does not shut down if the, the blue light is still emitting you know, sparkles in your brain and it, your brain just, just never stop, stops to rest. Your body might be resting, but as long as your brain's moving like that, you're not really resting. And they also suggest kind of a morning pages journaling practice. That, uh, if you develop that, the idea is, you know, it doesn't mean write a half hour or anything in a certain number of pages, but if you have like a stream of consciousness, whatever comes to mind for, you know, first one or two pages, write that down because it kind of gets you in touch with your body and gives you a feeling of where your head is. And usually you don't have time to look at your head until well after you're on the road. Um, that was a habit that was suggested by Julia Cameron, who wrote The Artist's Way. Yeah, she was an artist who had you know, some good healthy rituals too. Um, then the fourth practice that they said, suggest, and this is all early in the morning, you haven't even had breakfast yet, it, it is practice gratitude. When you yeah. focus on gratitude, it, it helps calm uh, the deep areas inside your brain and uh, enhances other judgment areas. People that express gratitude are usually healthier and more optimistic about life. Uh, and, you know, I, I know a lot of cancer survivors and, and I'm one myself. So you know, every day is a gift. And when you look at life, you know, realize every day is a gift, then you just you look forward to having making the most of every day that you have. And it doesn't mean that you're fatalistic and thinking you're running out of days. It just means, you know, you've learned how to make the most of your days. And most of us. So a lot of us die before we even think of that. And so if you practice gratitude, first thing, it improves your mood and just makes you feel more content. You're not feeling, you know, jealous thoughts. You're not, you know, thinking, oh, I could wear this to the meeting, but so-and-so is going to have this on and she's going to, you know, outshine me because of the clothes. It's, it's like, no, gee, I'm really grateful I have a job and I'm going to have a paycheck to feed my kids and I've got, you know, nice clothes and um, and we're going to have a good day, no matter what. I could go in there naked and still have a good day. Is the way <laughs> your mind has to you know, think about it. And then the final thing is you've got to move your body. Waking up in the morning is not like crawling to the kitchen counter to get your coffee. Um, it says exercise is the, probably the biggest um, idea that is responsible for enhancing performance because it changes the brain chemicals doesn't just wake them up. It actually creates more of the productive brain chemicals, the happy ones, the ones, you know, the competitive ones, the ones that, you know, get you through the day and do well. Um, it actually improves your mood and improves your quality of life. It lowers level, uh, lowers unhealthy levels of cholesterol. And we're not talking about like a 60 minute walk, but even, you know, 15 minutes of yoga or brisk walk or just some yeah. st simple stretches. As if you were getting ready to take that big walk or run, you know. Um, 
And the next suggestion is skip the coffee, which would be skip any caffeine. Uh, research suggests that if you start your day with coffee or something else that's sugar, full of sugar, you know, you're going to have that sugar high and it's going to have that sugar letdown that you get a little bit after you've had that snack. And they suggest you should have a very nutrient um, breakfast like uh, smart mushrooms or, you, you know, a smoothies are good that has lots of things, you know, to, to get you going and with healthy stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of us, even with my grandkids, you know, it's easy to make that instant oatmeal, especially cinnamon. They love it. Well, that gives them all sugar. By the time they get to school, they're ready for a nap. So, um, so they suggest, you know, smoothies with those uh, various healthy mushrooms that are recommended. There's lots of information on the internet about how to do that. That was the, their sixth idea for having a great day. Do you have any questions so far? Does it sound like something I'm that like, you... Oh, my gosh. I Well, I yearn for the days when the kids are out of the house, so I do have more time. But I do believe in a routine. And it's that morning routine, I think, sets the day for me every day. I need that five minutes of meditation in bed just to relax, to... And it's kind of, it's, it's, it's like positive affirmations and being grateful for the day ahead and what I have. And then it prepares me and it calms me. Uh, if things, if I get up and I don't have that five minutes, things get a little wacky. I like, you know, it's hard with two kids right. trying to wake them up because they're, they don't, they don't want to wake up. Uh, but if I try to keep my, if I get myself relaxed and in my positive mindset, it usually works. It usually works well. If I'm running late, I think that messes the routine up. I, I think the routine and the structure. Well, they sense that you're feeling rushed. I try to get up an hour before I really need to be up because that way I have some myself to organize my day, check my calendar. But starting that morning routine really starts at night before yeah. you go to bed. You know, that turning off the electronics an hour before it's bedtime and kind of, you know, they recommend maybe having a notepad by your bed in case you think of something, you know, that you where you're going to forget in the morning. But if you've got a plan yeah. when you go to bed, then when you wake up, your brain knows what's expected of it. Your body knows what's expected of it. And you just get to it. Uh, it's not like, well, what was we going to do today? And, you know, oh, the kids are going to be resisting, you know, and, and then they sense your your dread of having to drag them out. Uh, they're part of creating a routine that makes them more productive. You know, like I, I always kind of resisted getting the school uniforms out and making sure my lunch was ready and all that other stuff the night before, but it actually gets your morning going faster. You know, and, and you know I what's agree. expected of you. Your body knows what's expected of you. Yeah. When you have better sweet, uh, sleep quality, it reduces your risk of chronic disease risk. Um, you know, there's all kinds of, again, it's all based on sciences. It's, I wish I had the job where I could just sit and imagine, you know, do this research, yeah. but um, it, 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 you know, there's all, it boosts your immune function. And right now we're under so much stress, stress just, you know, knocks your immune system out completely. Uh, so there's just a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, choices you have. Um, and it, it's important that you set your day with the success for success with a good morning routine. And that you end the day, maybe spend 15 minutes like, okay, you know, is there anything on my list that I didn't get to? Is it worth pushing it over to tomorrow? You know, or is it not, wasn't important to begin with? You know, you've, it gives you a purpose. If you live every moment with a purpose, you waste a lot less moments. Yeah. So I agree. And it's important too, to give the kids an example. Because they're going to remember that when they go off to college, they're not going to be thinking, oh, mom, I was maybe do my best and all that i'm free now i can do what i want and then they realize pretty quick why am i so sluggish why you know why am i depressed well, and it's it's because you left the routine that was a healthy habit and your so body's true. rebelling so you know those are uh important things that contribute to your health if, if a person can create those kind of habits it it actually does very well to making your life work a lot better yeah well, oh, thank you for sharing that. What other you know, things do you have on your routine as, list? Um, well, you know, we didn't talk about the actual person, personal care. We can't assume everybody knows you really do have yeah. to eat and brush your teeth and take a shower. Um, you know, that, that opens up the pores and, you know, contribute your whole body to, you know, we're ready to start fresh and you're not, um, you know, I, I, I've worked with nurses that actually have a, can of Febreze in there or some other air freshener in their car, they spray themselves with 
before they walk into somebody's house because they know they didn't take a shower because they didn't take the time to take care of themselves and they're afraid they might smell. So they, you know, like, that, that's especially if they're smokers, you yeah. know, uh, and again, with non, you know, smoking does stress your body out. Uh, that's not what this is about right now. So we're not going there. But you know, the big thing is with good self-care practices, you really do reduce the risk of chronic disease. Um, you know, if, if you have the genes for chronic disease, diabetes or you know, heart issues or anything like that, there's so much you can do to prevent your body from getting to that disabling stage. And, you know, that's it's nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody can do it for you. So. Uh, and you feel like you're more in control of your life. Even, you know, you can't control the traffic. You can't control your boss putting all kinds of demands on you. But you can rec control how you react to it. And, you you know, you can even plan in your routine. Okay, everything might not go that well, but we're ready for it. You know, we've, we've prepared. We've done the most we can to get our body and mind ready. And, you know, it just feels really good when you're actually healthy. Yeah, it does. It makes you feel a world of difference. By the way, uh, Peggy, just remind us how we can reach you. I just want to make sure we uh, establish uh, the website and phone number. Okay. Well, my website is uh, notjusthypnosis.biz, B-I-Z. You can reach me by telephone at 267-593-5557. Uh, and uh, my email is also notjusthypnosis at gmail.com. I do do virtual sessions uh, in addition to just traditional hypnosis. I'm an uh, integrative health nutrition coach, and I approach whatever you come to me for with a very holistic manner. And, and we kind of usually whatever you come in, you often realize that that's not really what brought you there. The universe had other plans you know, that you wanted to work on. And that's OK. We just work with what we have. And you now there's no judgment. There's no uh, my prices are reasonable. And uh my, my nursing health care background allows me to know a lot more about some of the medical issues that might be causing some of the things yeah. that you're worried about. And I can show you the relationship and, and what you can do about it. And by the way, how are you so, feeling? So what's that? I said, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm, I'm slow. You know, I, I had kidney stones this week and that can be very painful. Um, huh. And I've chosen to do everything I can diet wise and, you know, cranberries and uh, heating pads and things like that, because I still need to function. I'm very sensitive to medication. Uh, drinking lots of water. Hydration, again, is the biggest key. Uh, since you recently had some anesthesia, the anesthesia stays with you even at your age, sometimes a week or two. I didn't know that. And, and, and the way to get it out of you is um, is just flush it through with as much water as you can. Okay, keep going. When elderly all people, drinking. when an elderly person has anesthesia, sometimes it can stay with their bodies for up to four to six months. Oh my gosh! Depending on how their circulation is and everything else, so um, you know you should be able to recover pretty quickly. But you've got to listen to your body and make sure that your body tells you what you can and cannot do. Oh, yeah. Laying down, sitting up, not good. Sitting up is good. <laughs> Laying down and then getting up, it's painful. But we'll see. I guess that's normal when they uh, go through, you know, make all those incisions. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it'll be okay. But right now it still looks like I have a hernia. And I called the doctor this morning. I said, I still have a huge bump. He's like, that's awkward. He said, it could be swelling. Let's wait two days to see. I said, yeah, one side looks flat. The other side's still there. So I hope it didn't pop back out. But who knows? Well, we got to see. Well, you know, do you have to wear a binder? No, nope, he didn't give me anything to wear. Okay, then I might find like a, uh, a pillow on your sofa that's fairly firm and make sure that when you're just sitting and not doing a whole lot, that you know, and if you have to get up and it's you're pulling on the muscles, hold a pillow there against your belly to give it some support. Yeah. Because, you know, you, uh, there's things you do automatically. You might not realize that you accidentally pulled it too fast or... And when you're driving, if you stop suddenly, you know, even if it's a little jerk, that's all it takes to undo what they just did. Yeah, it's, it's just a bigger surgery up. the next time. Getting up out of bed is the hardest. But uh, yeah, I got the kids pulling me up. We're good. We'll see. Who knows? <laughs> you gotta right? be careful how they pull you up, though. Kids tend to want to come on, mom. Take you take one arm. I'll take the other arm. And now that doesn't pull work. both ways. No, I know. I wish Especially I had like something to grab onto. I don't have like a post like that. So. 
Yeah, it's awkward getting up. So maybe I pulled it, but I'm, I'm just let's say it's swelling for now. We'll, well, we'll stay positive. If the area gets extremely red or the pain really, really increases, that's the biggest warning signs. You have to call the doctor. But Got you it. can help yourself by, you know, hydration is just that magic, you know, magic uh, potion that just gets you right through there. So oh, I'm saying it, with yeah. you, right? So when are we, how do you know, do they do ultrasounds to see when the kidney stone passes? They, they get a CAT scan. And, okay, and, and then I still have to get an ultrasound, a few other tests to see. Uh, so wow. there'll be, but that was, for, I chose that route rather than let's go under the table, under the knife right away. And they blast it, right? Uh, so they haven't gotten to that point yet, but if it's not gone by next week, they'll blast it. I've actually been passing them on their own, so. Oh, God bless. But, we all so. have to deal with pain, but my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, I hope you feel better. Well, you had two kids. you remember what the, how painful that was? Yeah, but I didn't have a C-section. So to me, that wasn't that painful. This, I'm realizing, oh, my painful. goodness, I had a C-section. That's really painful. They're cutting up every single layer straight. This is just, you know, the two sides where they're right. cutting the muscle. But a whole C-section cuts everything. So I don't know how people do that. God bless. Well, now with that regenerative medicine that we talked about last week, I mean, mm -hmm. people are fixing even hernias and, you know, bad knees and hips and everything um, by taking other healthy parts of your body and putting it in areas that aren't so healthy. Yeah, that's so. what they said yesterday. I didn't know that they're taking muscles. They said the muscle, your stomach muscles are like layers, like onions. You're going to remove some of the layers of my stomach muscles and put that layer over the hernia. I didn't even know that was possible. <gasps> It's possible, but I would have asked him, like, while you're there, are you going to remove any fat that I might still have? You don't have much, but, you know, <laughs> that would have been my thought. Well, listen, you know, but you don't have to charge me extra, but since you're there, maybe we could just make some of that disappear. Exactly, tummy right? Tuck. Tommy Tuck at yeah. the same time. Ah, yeah. A few more years for that. Yeah, I'm still okay. I'm still okay, except the hernia is popping out. But other than that, yeah, not too bulgy, not yeah. yet. No. But All anyway, right, well, I hope sorry. you feel better. Well, you too, yeah, sweetheart. Okay. We, still, we still got a few minutes. What else did you want our okay. listeners to know, Miss Peggy? Uh, well, just rituals are, you know, people think of the word rituals and they think of the religious connotation. A lot, a lot of people do have negative uh, attitudes towards that, uh, especially if you were raised in a very structured religion. So instead of looking at ritual, rich, the word rituals, you could change it to... Um, Oh, just, uh, you know, acti healthy activities that's on your to-do list or something. Don't don't think about it if, if, if it makes you feel yeah. like it has a negative connotation. You know, find a description for it that, you know, I mean, it's your, uh, your to-do list or it, it's your, you know, plan of action that's going to keep you healthy or, you know, whatever term you're used to using in the business world. You know, you can adapt words like that that, uh, that you can re relate to. And it's not going to seem like a chore when you can see the future and it's a future healthy you, which you can visualize through hypnotic, you know, self hypnosis type techniques. Um, then you're all excited about doing whatever it takes. Oh, so. and are you still, you're still carrying, I hear some, you have, I know you're, you're love animals. I hear, is that some birds I hear in the background? Are they anyone yes. new? Yeah, that was Fred. Fred just had to say hello. Hi, hi Fred. Fred. Can you say hi? So he's looking, he said, why am I in the cage? <laughs> they usually come, the dogs are kind of restrained right now. So they're, uh, uh, you know, he wants to come out and come see me. That's his thing. Come see me. He used to be a mascot in a pet store. And so when I do go to pet stores, I bring him with me and he sits on the shopping cart and talks to all the customers. That is so adorable. Bring him on the show one day. Come on, bring him out. Yeah, but they wanted to do that today, but I figured we have more energy on another day. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. And if we do want to reach out to you at Happy Possibilities, tell us how we do so. Uh, phone com phone number is area code 267-593-5557. Uh, my website, uh, you can also text me with the phone number. Uh, the website is notjusthypnosis.biz. Um, and the, the email is notjusthypnosis at gmail.com. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much, Miss Peggy Smith. We'll talk next All week right. and looking forward to it. And you feel better. I'll feel better. We'll be hopefully mended by next week. We'll see. Okay. We're both going to hydrate lots. Exactly. I'll continue to do so. Thank you again for making it happen. And happy possibilities. Okay, take care. Always. Bye, sweetheart. You too. 
Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.